Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe, and I'm so glad you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today's message is about how our Lord tests His own. God tests all of us, no exceptions. And so, brothers and sisters, if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to the book of James, chapter 1. And we'll start reading at verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. And death is hell, brothers and sisters. And so, brothers and sisters, we all have to be tested. God clearly says here he doesn't tempt us. But he allows the devil to be in this world to tempt all of us, to test our faith. So now, brothers and sisters, if you turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 9, and we will read verses 43 and 44. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands to go to hell, and to the fire that shall never be quenched, where their worm does not die, and the fire is not quenched. Now the worm is your soul, and here it clearly says it doesn't die, and the fire is never quenched. So it's eternal torment forever and ever, brothers and sisters. In the book of Matthew Chapter 25, verse 46, it reads, These will go into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. So brothers and sisters, anyone that is not a child of God, that is not following Jesus, obeying his commandments, he tells us, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so we're all tested. You can't just go to the altar Say, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. Be baptized and that's it. You get to go to heaven. Many are called, but few are chosen. So all that go to the altar are called, but the ones that are chosen are ones that choose to follow Jesus, to obey our Lord and Savior. He did not come on this earth to die for your sins and mine so that we would continue to sin. So he leaves the devil here to tempt us with sin. Can an alcoholic stop drinking alcohol? Yes, he can. Can a drug addict stop taking drugs? Yes, he can. Can an adulteress stop committing adultery? Yes, she can. If she wants to seek God by making proper changes in her life, to renew that carnal mind of hers, and God will renew her mind completely, renew that stony heart into a loving, pure heart, and fill her with the Holy Spirit, and she will no longer commit adultery. Do you understand? We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We need the desire to please God and do His will. And we're all being tested, brothers and sisters. There are no exceptions. You can't believe part of the Bible and interject your own beliefs. You can't believe that, well, hell is a real place, but the people are just going to go there and die and they're not going to suffer forever. Because the Word of God doesn't lie. God cannot lie. Remember, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That was Jesus. And that's the Word of God, brothers and sisters. And if you have faith in Jesus, you have to believe all of the Word of God. 
And so if you have loved ones that are sinning perpetually over all the time, you need to seek them out and tell them they need to repent. Turn from those sinful ways so God can fill them with the Holy Spirit. Write their name in the book of life and seal them for the day of redemption. But if you want to believe that, no, they're just going to die and if they want to live the way they want, okay. No. You love them as you love yourself. So you got to speak out to them and to your friends and to your strangers, brothers and sisters. John 3.16 says, If you believe that he came and died for your sins, you're saved. But if you believe in him, you're going to want to serve him, please him and do his will. And his will is not that we continue to sin. And so that's how we're tested. It's our faith that's being tested because if we believe his word and we know his desire is that we don't continue to sin. Remember, the word of God said here, it's better to cut your hand off and go to heaven with one hand than to go to hell with two and suffer in eternity forever and ever. He wouldn't say that if it's his desire that you continue to sin. People that think that they can just go to the altar, ask God for forgiveness, say, I believe that you died for my sins and go and continue sinning perpetually all the time. They're trying to take advantage of God. Take advantage of God. The definition of take advantage of someone is to ask for or expect more than is fair or reasonable from someone. That someone here is God. Do you understand? You think God sent his only begotten son to come and die a suffering death to pay your penalty and mine so we could continue to sin? That's not reasonable. We should not expect that. And anybody who expects that is trying to take advantage of God. And God's not going to let that happen, brothers and sisters. And that's why we are tested every day. And we need to ask for, for forgiveness when we sin with remorse in our heart. And he forgives us. Praise God. Praise Yeshua. But we are going to better ourselves in grace by the help of the mighty, powerful Holy Spirit. That's how you conquer sin. That's how you overcome sin. Because Jesus overcame sin. And part of Jesus is inside of you, brothers and sisters, is stronger than anything in the world, including the devil. So when the devil tempts you, you rebuke him in Jesus' name, and he is gone. He will flee. Amen? Amen. So one more passage. Turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 20. And I'll start reading at verse 1. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of that dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottom of his pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things he must be released for a little while. So brothers and sisters, after God takes up his church, and there's great tribulation here, hell on earth, for a period of time until God comes and sends all of them in the fire and burns up the earth, makes a new earth, and God himself, Jesus himself, will reign on that new earth with the 144,000 Jews that are chosen, that are in Israel right now. And he will reign with them a thousand years. And over that thousand years, many people are going to be born and the devil's going to be chained up in hell. He's not going to be tempting them like, like he tempts us. They're not going to be tested like you and I are being tested now. But they need to be. And that's why God is going to release the devil for a period of time after the thousand years. Because they have to be tempted as well. Because God will test their faith. And whether or not they want to please God and do his will. 
Everybody wants to pass a test. And this is a test of a lifetime, literally. So brothers and sisters, you must overcome sin with the help of the mighty and powerful Holy Spirit. And in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, it reads, To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. So keep pressing forward for that upward call to please God and do His will. And we will all be with our Lord and Savior someday in the paradise of God. Amen? Amen.